1945, a Polish lab technician discovered pieces of paper floating in a toilet at Bonn University. Little did he know, the discovery would trigger one of the most controversial intelligence initiatives in United States history. When around 1,600 Nazi scientists were recruited to the U.S. Those pieces of paper were fragments of the Ossenberg List, a roll call of Nazi Germany's top scientists, rocketeers, and engineers. Nazi leaders aimed to identify and reassign them from the battle to the laboratory in the desperate hope of turning the tide of the war. But when the war in Europe ended and Nazi Germany was defeated, news of the Ossenberg List made it into the hands of U.S. intelligence, where it was seen as an opportunity for the U.S. government to recruit the scientists for themselves. At the end of the war, and with the approval of President Harry S. Truman, Operation Paperclip commenced in 1945. It was so secret, even the Justice Department's Nazi hunters, whose job it was to track down Nazis for criminal prosecution, didn't know of its existence. Between 1945 and 1959, around 1,600 Nazi scientists were recruited as part of the operation. Many had previously served as high-ranking Nazi officials, including infamous aerospace engineer Werner von Braun, creator of the Third Reich's deadly V-2 rockets, weapons used to bomb London, England during the war. Due to Operation Paperclip, von Braun became director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center and the chief architect of the Apollo moon landing launch vehicle. With a successful firing of the Saturn, a gigantic stride has been taken in the exploration of space. Specialists in chemistry, physics, and electronic engineering were also hired. The roughly 1,600 scientists and their $10 billion in technical and intellectual secrets that included patents and industrial processes were considered intellectual reparations and a part of Germany's war reparations. Details of the covert operation finally came to light in 1958, when Time magazine ran a story on Werner von Braun. Yet despite the publicity, no paperclip recruits were ever charged or held accountable for their war crimes. And many went on to live happy, successful lives as U.S. citizens. What can happen when ethical lines are challenged or crossed by the government?